Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan and this is We the Govern. This is a short video today and I just wanted to talk about the initiative process in Washington State, which uh, was implemented by a constitutional amendment back in 1912. And uh, people have been collecting signatures on sheets just like these in front of grocery stores and at civic events for over a century. Now, th what is interesting is that there's a lot of confusion around the initiative process. And I'm going to link to some special, uh, to some uh, source links down below that you might find interesting. But essentially, this isn't that complex. There's, a, there's only three different types of initiatives that you can run in Washington. One is a referendum, and a referendum is basically if the legislature passes a bill you don't like and you want to collect signatures to repeal it and put it on the ballot that same November, you have a relatively short window of time to collect those signatures by the summer, by July, and then uh, you, if you collect enough signatures, then you're able to get it on the ballot. Now, the downside to that is that it's a short window of time to collect those signatures, and the title is oftentimes very confusing. People always get confused with referendums because of the complexity of how they put together the title. The more commonly uh, known uh, initiative process is initiatives to the people and initiatives to the legislature. Now, initiatives to the people are, uh, you collect about 400,000 signatures. It's a little bit less. They say it's 325,000. But the Secretary of State's office, which is where you have to turn in these sheets when you're all done here, um, they say to get about 15 to 20% extra in signatures because of the number of signatures that are proven to be invalid or duplicative. So you want to be safe. You want to get about 400,000 signatures. And you have to collect all those signatures for an initiative to the people by July as well. And then it goes on the ballot in November. So that's the one that you'll probably see a couple of these efforts throughout Washington State where people are collecting these signatures in front of Walmart or other stores and they are in a hurry and that's why they're oftentimes paid signature gatherers because it takes a lot of money to pay enough people to collect that many signatures in such a short period of time. Let me tell you about the third one, which I think is going to be more interesting this year. The third one is what's called an initiative to the legislature. Now, that's the same number of signatures. You still have to collect the 400,000, but you have until December to do it. And the process is that that goes straight to the legislature. And if they like that initiative, the legislature gets to vote on it and make it law. And the interesting thing about it is if they do vote on it and make it law, the governor cannot veto it. It's actually veto-proof, and that's the way the Constitution works. Now, if the legislature doesn't like it, then it goes on the ballot the next year. So that means in this year's 2022 when I'm doing this video. So that means if you get it to the legislature, it would be during the 2023 session in January. If they said no, it would end up on the ballot in 2023. Now, Activists tend to like that one better because that process, an initiative to the legislature, that process gives you a lot more time to collect those signatures. And it's not an easy task to collect signatures. What's unusual about this year, and why I think this kind of matters, is that the Republicans, as I've mentioned in previous videos, have a decent chance of controlling both houses of the legislature. We'll see what kind of a red wave really happens, but it does seem like that's actually an outcome that could happen here in Washington State, which would be the first time since 1996 that that's been a potential for activists to actually turn in more conservative or liberty-leaning or liberty-oriented uh, initiatives, and the legislature would at least have an arguable chance of putting it in as law, and Governor Inslee couldn't veto it. So that could be something that makes 2022 an interesting year for activists all around Washington State, and I plan to talk about this a little bit more in future videos, but this just gives you an update, and hopefully this is a good overview of how the initiative process works in Washington State. If you want to learn more, go to wethegovern.com. Also, go to some of the source links I have down below. Send me your comments on what you think would be a great idea for an initiative in the to the legislature this year, and we'll see what happens.